July 29, 2019, the Union Cabinet approved a new policy after 34 years gap. National policy on education, 1986, focused on access and equity, meaning availability and fairness. Fairness because there are people who are more disadvantaged than others where access to education is concerned. However, today the focus along with access and equity is on quality of education. NEP 2020 redefines the curricular and pedagogical structure of school education to focus on a holistic development of learners reducing curriculum and content to enhance essential learning and critical thinking and emphasizing on experiential learning through an integrated approach the purpose of nep is to design a vision and framework for school and higher education implementation may happen with effect from 2022 or 2023 because the timelines are not very clear but most probably it will be fully functional post pandemic it proposes a change in the school education academic structure which is going to be explained in the next slide if you need to bring a big change bring a transformation in the education system this transformation in the curricular and pedagogical structure has come in as a proposal of NEP the existing academic structure which we all know is 10 plus 2 years the new academic structure that has been proposed is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 years the new pedagogical and curricular structure of school education has 12 years of schooling along with 3 years of anganwadi or preschool which is a total of 15 years the first stage is the foundation this is a 5 year stage where 3 years are nursery jkg and skg and for 2 years the child moves in to grade 1 and 2 and together these 5 years will be the foundation for education here the education is multi level play and activity based learning the child moves on for 3 years to preparatory or primary school the premise and the strategies that are going to be used in these classes are play way discovery based activity based and interactive classroom learning after grade 5 a 3 year program includes classes 6 to 8 which is called the middle school here the experiential learning in sciences maths arts social sciences and humanities is going to be offered and the next stage is another 4 years including classes 9 to 12 which will be called the secondary schooling these years include multidisciplinary study greater critical thinking flexibility and student choice of subjects the point to be noted here is that students aged 3 to 5 years have been included in the formal education system for the first time the key principles of nep respect for diversity and local context equity and inclusion community participation use of technology emphasize conceptual understanding unique capabilities critical thinking and creativity and continuous review the universal access to early childhood care and education which is ECCE is the focus today and the topic i'm dealing with the universal access for children of 3 to 6 years access to free safe high quality ECCE at Anganwadi's preschools and Balwatika foundational learning curriculum for the age group of 3 to 
divided in two parts. Part 1 from age 3 to 6 in ECCE and part 2 age 6 to 8 in grades 1 and 2 in the primary school. The preparatory class where the prior to age of 5 every child will move to a preparatory class of Balvatika that is before class 1. This is a multifaceted education program which is flexible, has multi-level play-based activities, activity-based education, creativity enhancement and inquiry-based learning. This implementation will be jointly carried out by the ministries of HRD, Women and Child Development, Health and Family Welfare and Tribal Affairs. I am here to discuss the ECCE Framework, National Curricular and Pedagogical Framework for Early Education will be drafted by the NCERT. Research and best practices will be aligned with the latest research of ECCE and national and international best practices. Multifaceted framework comprising of alphabets, languages, numbers, counting, colors, shapes, indoor and outdoor play, puzzles, logical thinking, problem solving, drawing, painting and other visual art, craft, drama, puppetry, music and movement. The school preparation module would be a three-month play-based school preparation module for all grade one to one students to be developed by the NCRT. In the early childhood formative years, the focus would be on developing curiosity, logical thinking and problem solving, arts, craft and music, the relationship with nature, colors, shapes, alphabets, numbers, teamwork and collaboration, play-based and discovery-based learning, ethics, self-identity, etiquette, behavior and emotional development. Some of the other key focus areas which are important to be mentioned here are gender sensitivity to be an integral part of the curriculum, bridging the gender gap. There is a focus on bridging the gender gap and provide equal opportunities to all. Secondly, supporting children with special needs. Children with special needs will be integrated in the regular schooling process from elementary to higher education levels. Along with them, there's also a support for gifted students, students with special talents. Even BA programs will allow specialization in education of the gifted children. Another interesting feature is that the main medium of instruction would be the mother tongue. For the first time, we have seen this change because most of us have always been believing or made to believe that the parent wants the child to start speaking English the day he steps into the school. Although we all agree that the best learning can happen only when the child understands and is fluent in his own language and that is the mother tongue. The child can learn a number of languages when he comes of age and no one can deny that the child can handle multiple languages. There'll be no exams, so no pressure or stress or fear of exams. The mode of teaching would be experiential and playway in order to develop love for school and learning. Children would have no uniform and curiosity and inquisitiveness would be the way to go. Breakfast has been added to the midday, midday meal scheme. I think it is to minimize the dropout rates. A child's mental development that happens in the first eight years is the critical period. All mental faculties should be developed and the child should be exposed to all types of sensory learning experiences in order to discover talents. Each child is born unique and there are multiple examples to prove this theory. Education should be able to discover, nurture and develop this uniqueness. Unfortunately, 
our present education system kills creativity, muffles questions, covers the sparkle in the eyes with tinted shades, and chisels and files the talents into desired shapes, pegs to fit into uniform holes. The smug satisfaction is given the name schooling. Hopefully, the new education policy will open new doors to develop mental faculties, unleash the latent talents and potential, hone the skills, nurture talents and abilities, and also give freedom for creative thinking. Talking about challenges, I'm reminded of a report, ASA 2018. This report reveals an acknowledged fact about the lower quality of education in India, specifically highlighting the lack of school readiness among the pre-primary children. The numbers regarding health and nutrition of children also do not show a very positive picture. The lack of age-appropriate education across the preschools in India is a critical observation. ECC in India is an evolving story, but challenges are also quite visible. Developing an integrated curriculum framework is not going to be a very easy job. Qualified teachers are also lacking in early education and a lot of resources need to be spent on teacher training. The recruitment also has to be very fairly done. Development of infra is also a very important requirement. And another very important thing is that the policy lacks a time-bound action plan, ECCE. We're talking about the care aspect, but it is not defined clearly how this is going to come about. It also addresses fair, equal opportunities, universalization, but it has failed to talk about RTE. Well, let's see how it is going to be tackled, but execution will hold the key. The unfortunate part of this revelation is that most of the people in this world are not even aware of the skills and talents they bring to the table. And as a result, they live an ordinary life, thereby missing an opportunity to become extraordinary. With this education policy giving importance to the age group of 3 to 8 years, it will definitely give a child a chance to uncover his talents and abilities, thereby helping him to his purpose, which in turn will take him on the path of greatest happiness. It is imperative for us to know that this age bracket of 3 to 8 years has been rightly called foundation stage. Over 85% of the child's cumulative brain development occurs prior to the age of 6, indicating the criticality of appropriate care and stimulation of the brain in the early years to ensure healthy brain development and growth. The child who would be taken care of with an emphasis on early childhood care and education from the age of three years will definitely become a better student. In our country, especially in the government schools, the kids start going to school at the age of six. Correct time for the child to explore the world is through the school. The children are born curious. Anyone who has been around with a three-year-old kid knows how tiresome it has been trying to keep up with the endless string of questions. It is common sense to encourage curiosity. When the child goes to school, the curiosity would be well handled by the trained teachers as is envisaged in the new policy. Another important factor is that the foundation of one's personality is laid in the first three to five years of life. 
the healthiness of the adults would largely be determined by the quality of life the child lives during these formative years the child who is raised with an abundance of affection love some elementary knowledge and encouragement would tend to develop a positive and a stable personality being with the peers playing together painting rolling in the dust laughing together eating healthy food in the care of trained teachers and counselors should be enough fun to lure these young children to the school once this love is developed and the habits of thinking asking questions learning by doing are inculcated the children are ready for lifelong learning hence when the children would move to a school which would actually be a play school with lots of fun and pleasure i'm sure there will they are bound to learn very fast the only concern is the implementation of such a progressive policy for effective implementation the primary requirement is of effective teachers who are well equipped to shape the destiny of our future generations so as i said earlier implementation holds the key i'm for the new education policy for the ecce which sounds really good